Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on my channel. Now today I've got a lovely inky technique for you and this is creating a faux vellum look. So I really love the look of vellum where you get that sort of subtle soft colours coming through but we're going to create that by using some stamps. Now I've chosen to use Seedless Preserves, Villainous Potion and Broken China as my colours but this can be achieved with any colour of ink. It needs to be a Distress Ink or a Distress Oxide to react with water in the correct way. I find oxides do seem to work best with this. If you love anything that I'm using in my video, particularly my new Snowflake stamps, so these are what I'm focusing on today, they're from the new Textures Snow Flurry range, everything's linked down below, so you'll be able to find those there. I am using affiliate links, but it'd be very much appreciated if you could click through to those and browse Craft Stash when you get a chance. So other things you're going to need besides some blending brushes or if you prefer foam sponges, absolutely fine. You're going to need some clear embossing ink and some clear embossing powder as well. Must make sure they are clear and some water spray. Then just for good measure, I like a bit of kitchen towel, but you can um, do this by leaving it to sort of air dry a little bit too. So sometimes I would apply my uh, Distress Oxides by using the smooching technique, but I can't do that today because essentially we don't want the inks coming into any liquid or water until we're ready for that to happen. So uh, I need to keep the blending dry. So I'm just going to do patches on my cardstock, um, just quite randomly. So this corner, let's come to this area as well. We're not looking for perfection either, just some nice deep colour going down. I do find, like I said earlier, the darker the colours, the better the result with this technique. So I'm going to work around this cardstock, filling it with my three colours. Once you've got solid panels of your card, your colour, sorry, down there, you can go back in and start blending these into each other a little bit more. Don't worry too much about the blending it's not essential um, it does you know it looks a little bit better but once you've done the technique that I'm going to show you in just a moment you won't you won't really notice whether it's blended nicely or not to be honest I just like to do it because it's habit and if you're new to distress oxides and distress inks and you're wondering well why on earth am I always using these I've got lots of videos on my channel talking through uh, the differences between distress inks and distress oxides um, I've got videos talking about the various colours as well and showing them off individually. So do pop along there, have a look and I'd love it if you could drop me a subscribe as well. That would be amazing. So I've got my three colours there blended. My mat's a bit dirty but I can use my water to clean that off a little bit later. Uh, now what I'm going to do is allow this to dry thoroughly. Now whether you leave it to air dry or you speed it up with a heat gun, either way it needs to be bone dry before we do the next stage. If you're not sure whether your panel is dry, you can always take your clear embossing powder and sprinkle it over. So maybe give it a whiz dry with your heat gun first of all. And as long as the powder's not sticking, it should be dry. So I can see there, just check the other corners as well, but it's just falling back off. A bit of a tap, it's fine. So I can go ahead and I can do the next stage. So before we do any heat embossing, we're always going to use our anti-static pad or bag and that just reduces the static but it also dries up any tiny damp patches that you might also have. So just get into the habit of doing that and you'll always have really good heat embossing. Now I'm going to start with the largest of my snowflakes and I'm going to use a variety of them here. I'm going to press this. Now this is quite a large stamp so I'm going to roll this onto my, my platform. I've got, actually got an acrylic block because I like to use these when I'm doing lots of little stamping as I am here. If I'm stamping just one thing in one place then I will always use a stamping platform. I'm going to use my clear embossing ink, really ink up my stamp well. So I tend to do it two ways. I'll go ink pad to stamp and then I'll turn over and I'll go stamp to ink pad as well. And then I just know that I've caught all the areas. And I'm going to just randomly pop this on a corner. And as I press down, I can see the darkness underneath in each area. So I know that each part of the stamp has touched the surface. Give that a really good press everywhere. 
and as you peel that off you should be able to see you can just about see that there now um, I might do this one again actually I really like this image this is a beautiful snowflake stamp I do also have within the texture snow uh, flurry collection I do also have the matching dies coordinating dies for these two so if you love snowflakes like these they are available at craft stash also there we go just press that one down beautiful okay so now I'm just going to switch and go to another snowflake a slightly smaller one and do exactly the same thing so pressing that really into the ink there and down onto my panel of cardstock and I'm going to go round my card repeating this until I've filled in all the spaces that I want to there we go so I'm happy with the amount of clear embossing that I've got on there or clear embossing ink I'm now going to cover this with my clear embossing powder you might feel more comfortable doing a couple of snowflakes uh, going ahead and heat setting those with your powder and then going back afterwards and doing some more um, I'm quite happy I know that this ink is going to stay sticky for a very long time so I've got plenty of time to work my way around the cardstock all at the same time so I tend to try and use my powder as well um, just like this just sort of sprinkling it over and tapping it around I've only got a small amount actually left just give that a flick that will remove any powder from here I've only got a small amount left in my pot but it's lasting me ages there we go so I think that's all good okay so now we can pop this back in the tub here put the lid on because I'm very clumsy and I do tend to knock things over and then I'm going to use my heat gun and I'm just going to heat set these snowflakes now while I'm heating these and um, just let you know that this isn't just a winter themed technique you could do this technique with leaves for an autumn or fall card um, you could do this with um, sort of Christmas images if you want to you could do it with something for birthdays weddings whatever it may be uh, so just pick your images but I would suggest the images are reasonably big and bold rather than uh, smaller ones the smaller and finer the detail the harder it's going to be to see the effect now just protecting my surface because this is where it can get a little bit messy I've used distress oxides and when oxides come into contact with water they literally oxidize uh, when inks come into contact with water distress inks you almost get this sort of bleached effect so I'm just going to spray all over the surface of my piece there and you'll be able to see the color starting to move about on the paper now I'm going to give that just a few moments to settle I mean look how dark that went uh, and I'm just going to give it a moment and then what I'm going to do is take that piece of kitchen towel that I suggested you might want earlier and just lift off the excess now you might get mucky fingers here you probably will get mucky fingers <laughs> but we're going to repeat this process a couple of times so just lift off the color as you can see and what's happened is that gorgeous embossing those snowflakes have been resisted there so then I'm going to repeat again and each time you do this you'll find you lift off a little bit more color so leaving it a little bit longer each time just to kind of do what it's going to do just to work with the ink and start reacting so again I'm going to lift off the color I mean look how much we're lifting off each time there really is quite a lot there and you're starting to fade out that color in the background more and more each time you do this I definitely suggest dab rather than uh, swiping because depending on your cardstock it might not like being swiped it might actually start pilling where you've got the wet cardstock there but already you can see that really lovely sort of vellum technique or vellum look in the background where it's faded and your snowflakes are much darker now I'm just going to do this one more time this time I'm going to let the water sit on there and then I'm going to heat set it rather than lifting it off with a kitchen towel 
there we go so when that's all dry you can see you get that lovely cloudy effect where it's almost sort of washed out the color but the snowflakes have held on to the deep dark colors it does work best with the darker colors as you can see here how much better the purple looks compared to the blue but you do still get that look either way um, definitely go for your darker colors for the most dramatic effect but i really love that sort of look of vellum where it's all sort of frosted out ever so slightly no pun intended when we were talking about snowflakes so i'll just finish that off by gluing that onto my card base and popping a quick sentiment on there but that is using the gorgeous snowflakes a5 stamp set from the Textures Snow Flurry collection. And if you like techniques like this, please do subscribe to my channel because I've got lots more coming up, particularly um, with this collection because it's just recently been released. Um, but I do have lots of other techniques with Distress Inks and Oxides too. Thank you for watching everybody. Take care, I'll see you soon.